man glorify you because you brought us together lord this is retreat for believers to deepen the lives of christians and also to call people who have not known the lord to know the lord and father we pray we will know you we will serve you we will listen to your word we will obey your word we will do things at the appropriate time in jesus name we are praying that you will help us so that all the things that have to be done physically spiritually everything will be done appropriately in jesus name we're asking that your word will be made clear and plain and the spirit of the living god will help us so that we can do everything we ought to do thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray Let's turn our Bibles together to First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, from verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. In First Peter chapter 4, verse 16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You will see that Peter in his epistle to the believers used the name Christian. And he was writing this epistle to the people who have believed on the name of Jesus Christ, who can be called Christians, followers of the Lord Jesus jesus and he emphasized that the experience that made these people to be referred to as christians is that they are born again we need to notice that especially as we consider this message in his steps that is in the steps of the lord jesus christ here he tells us that the people that he refers to as the children of God in this epistle, one, they have been born again. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Here, the word salvation can be substituted for born again. The word redemption or the word forgiveness or the word justification or regeneration, they all mean the same thing. They are different sides of the same Christian experience. These people had been justified by faith. They repented of their sins. They believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They became born again. Once they were in darkness, now they are in the light. Once they were in sin, but now their sins have been forgiven. Once they were groping in the religions of the world, now they are following Christ and Christ alone. Once they didn't have assurance within their hearts that they will go to heaven when they died, but now they had assurance within them that they belong to God and that heaven was meant for them. In a word, they were born again. They were born again by the word of God. And then it tells us that as soon as they were born again, they became new babes in Christ. Chapter 2, verse 2. 
as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. They had received the grace of God. They had received the goodness of God in them. Their lives had been changed. They were new babes in Christ. And as new babes in Christ, they were called unto the life of believers. The lives of Christians. The people that actually knew the will of God for their lives. And they were following through. In chapter 3. In chapter 3. Verse 13. And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake. Happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you. A reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you as evil doers. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse you your good conversation in Christ. You can see that he addressed the people as believers. And he expected that they will live as the children of God. And he spoke to them in various ways. That they should be obedient to the word of the Lord. In chapter 4. Chapter 4. From verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ. Happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part is evil spoken of. On your part is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. As a thief. Or as an evil doer. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if ye suffer as a Christian. Be not ashamed. But glorify him. But let but let him glorify God on this behalf. Again, he emphasizes the fact that now they were believers, they had repented. They should not be thieves anymore. They should not live the life of the unbeliever anymore. They should not suffer as an evil doer anymore. Which means, you have repented, so live a righteous life. You have repented, so live as a christian ought to live you have repented let the people around you know of your repentance and let them know that you are a child of god in chapter 5 verse 10 but the god of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Again, you can see his emphasis. You have tasted of the grace of God. Then go on to perfection, to maturity. Let's come back now to First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should he should follow his steps as i've told you i'm talking to you on in his steps if you have been born again if you say you are a child of god you are called on to follow the lord jesus christ to follow him intimately to follow him in everything that you do in your life. Which means, now that you have become a Christian, in whatever situation you find yourself, whatever crossroad you find yourself, you will ask yourself a question. What will Jesus do if Jesus found himself in this situation? Maybe temptation comes your way. And the people of the world are calling you to commit sin. They are calling you to live like they live. 
to talk like they talk, you will ask yourself, if Jesus Christ was faced with this temptation, with this trial, what will he do? It is possible that you are in a family and you are the only believer there and they are trying to provoke you. They are trying to annoy you. They are trying to make you give up the faith. You will ask yourself, if Jesus Christ were in this situation and the people of the world were trying to provoke him, what will he do? What will he say? It may be that you are working in a corporation or you are working in a company or you are working as a civil servant or you are working in the market. You are working on your own. And you see that all the other people working around you, they are behaving a particular way. Maybe they give bribes. Maybe they tell lies. Maybe they falsify accounts. Maybe they change retreat, ret uh, receipts. Whatever they are doing. Now, they may tempt you and call upon you to do the same thing. You will ask yourself, what will Jesus do? If you are born again, if you are a new babe in Christ, if truly you are being called to righteousness to follow Christ, if you are really a Christian, and if you have received of the grace of God to follow after the Lord, you must ask yourself, what will Jesus do in this situation? Maybe you are married, and your husband is making trouble with you. Since, since you've gone to this uh, church, Deeper Life, and they have been teaching you about this Christian dressing and about this, I don't appreciate, I don't enjoy your outlook, your appearance anymore. And he wants you to change. You will ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Will Jesus see the word of the Father and then do contrary to the word of the Father? Will he be opposed to the word of God? Will he please a man? Will he please a woman and disobey and displease the Lord? You ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Maybe in the church, you find people, they are gossiping. As you come across them, they are talking about the pastor. They are talking about the coordinator of the house fellowship system. They are talking about some other people in the church. And they are laughing and jesting and slandering and cutting down and criticizing uh, all the people around them. And they say, oh, come here, brother so-and-so. Come here, sister so-and-so. We are just talking about a uh, pastor. We are just talking about his idiosyncrasies and about his weaknesses, about all these things that we find him doing, and he doesn't think that we know. Now, before you join them, ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Will he stand there cutting down another person? Will he stand there making jest of the pastor, of his servant of God? Will he stand there slandering the people that are bearing the vessel and the work of the Lord? You ask yourself, what will Jesus do? For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now, the Christians need to remember that we are to follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We find many Christian groups and ministries rising up. I told you that we traveled uh, in the early uh, 70s, many parts of the eastern states. And there's something I discovered in the eastern states, which is not very predominant around here in this part of the country. What I discovered in those early years is that immediately some people became born again. They will not stay under the yoke of the Lord. They will not stay under the teaching of the Lord. They will not learn a lot. Within the first few weeks that they get born again, 
They tell us at that time that the Lord has been speaking to them. They have a revelation. God has told them to start a ministry right now. For me, it was shocking. Because I knew that the Lord said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That time you have peace in your soul. You have rest in your mind. Then he doesn't say, after I've given you rest, jump up, go and establish a ministry. After I have given you rest, jump up and go and establish a new church. After you have got the peace that salvation brings, jump up and go to your own village and try to establish a group. He said, after you have been born again, come under, take my yoke upon you. And at that time, we had real difficulties. Explaining to these young, young people, some of them, they will stop secondary school at secondary three. They have just been born again. And they will tell us that they have a revelation. They have a dream. Now, they will have a placard. They will have a card. They are now evangelists so and so. Secondary, secondary three boy. Secondary uh, four boy will say, now, I have a ministry. And I will talk to some young, young people at the scripture union there and say, follow me. Are you not hearing the voice of God? Are you not seeing revelation? And some of those people, they will follow. And sometimes we spend hours with them. Hours with them. And some of these people did not know anything. In fact, do you know that some of them, they belong to the Ufoma group. And those people, they were occultic. Some of them, they say they are born again. After they say they are born again, because they have been with this group, they just jump out. They go to establish something. And they now they concentrate on vision and revelation and dreams and a lot of things. And when we go around them there, we see all the things they're doing. We see these people, they need to take the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ upon them. But they rebelled. But you see, as I go around now, a lot of those people, they have been swept away by the tide and the flood of circumstances. They were not strong enough to do what they said they wanted to do. They were not led of the Lord to do what they said they wanted to do. You see, brothers and sisters, immediately you are born again. The next thing to do is not to be a worker in the church. The next thing to do is not go to say be something. The next thing to do is to remain with the people of God and take the yoke of Christ upon you. You see, they tell us in, uh, you know, other churches, they accuse deeper life. Oh, they say deeper life is too strict. They even accuse us, they say deeper life is wasting talent. They have a lot of talents there. Just in their midst, they will just be sitting down, learning and learning and learning and learning. That when are they going to stop the learning? And they will give themselves as examples. They will say, I became born again. Six months after that, the Lord started using me. Well, we've seen a lot of those people. I remember a lot of them now that I don't want to tell you their names around, um, you know, Omahia area. We know a lot of them. I don't mean Omahia proper. I mean outside some of the villages around there. Whenever I went there those days, those people used to come from those neighboring surrounding villages. We used to discuss a lot. And I will see that these people, they need to be somewhere where they will learn the word of God. But it says, take my yoke upon you. And maybe you are here. And you are thinking, I've been a Christian for one year. And uh, they have not allowed me to stretch my leg, stretch my hand, establish my own thing, and go this way and go that way. Follow Christ. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You know what it means to be meek? A person who is meek will never be provoked and will not provoke anybody. You know, in the early years of deeper life, we had a lot of people coming to our Bible studies from these various places. And one day, uh, one of the ladies coming to the Bible study of Deeper Life came for counseling. He said, what should I do if the leader of our group is beating us with belt? I said, what do you mean? Oh, the, the lady said, I belong to such and such a group. Our leader got converted some months ago. 
and he established the ministry. And uh, in that ministry, where we have been before we heard about this Bible study and we're still there, anytime he was trying to bring us up in the choir and we didn't do well, he would loosen his belt and bring it out and beat us properly and say, you people, God has made me your leader, you are not obedient. And then if he told them that uh, you should uh, pray, you should give offering, you should give this, if they didn't do it, he would draw out his belt and beat them properly. And I said, you are still there? Oh, she said, yes. I'm only thinking, what should we do when he is beating us like that? I said, you should not even be in a place like that. A person that will draw out the belt and beat somebody who is under his ministry. Look at what Moses did. Moses did not draw the belt to beat anybody. All he said is that, should we bring water for you out of the rock, you stiff-necked people? And God said, Moses, that's enough. You will not get to the land of promise. He didn't use belt to beat them. Just spoke to them. And said, we will bring water. And he was angry. And he was provoked. You see, when you are learning from the Lord, you are not easily provoked. And you do not provoke other people. Yes, you can correct people, but you correct them in a way that Christ will correct. You see, it says, take my yoke upon you. And young people, take yoke of the Lord upon you. When I say young people, what I mean is, you've been converted for re recently, a few years ago. Learn of the Lord. Take my yoke upon you, for I am meek. We are to follow Christ. In the steps of Christ, we are to be meek. I think there are a lot of people that are not here who are members of deeper life. Why are they not here? Well, they are thinking, what are we going to learn again? We have been in this deeper life so for so many years now, going all the way to the headquarters church in Lagos and saying that we are learning. You people, you go. When you come back, tell me what they did over there. What a pity for them. Such people will never come to maturity. Such people will never be deepened in the things of the Lord. Then I find there are other people in our church here, they are too much in a hurry. In a hurry to preach. In a hurry to work. They don't want any yoke upon them. And they say, well, I can't stay in a place like this where the state overseer will rebuke you and correct you and over and over they just keep on teaching you they don't think that we can we also we have our own gift and talent and some of them will say even before i became uh, born again i was the senior prefect in our school and i was a real leader is an unbeliever a real leader are you going to bring all those things you are doing before you are born again and say, look at my talent, look at my ability. I also can lead, sit down, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We have not learned enough. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Lowly in heart. You see, some people are forgetting what it means to be humble. But Jesus Christ... The very son of God, he was humble. He performed all those miracles and he remained humble. You see some of our people now, if they pray and accidentally somebody that had um, headache, the headache went away, they cannot be humble anymore. When you say, brother so-and-so, don't call me brother so-and-so. Don't you know who I am? I am evangelist so-and-so. Didn't you hear the testimony last Friday? That when I prayed for so and so, that, uh, you know, the headache went away. And you are calling me brother so and so. You think I'm your equal? Don't call me brother. If you call me brother the next time, I'll be, I'll be rough with you. Call me evangelist so and so. Jesus didn't do that. After Jesus opened blind eyes, after he cured mad people, after he made the lame to walk, after he made the people that were even dead to rise from the dead. After he cleansed the lepers, he said, I am meek and lowly in heart. And we are to follow the steps of Jesus Christ. You know, today, if you call some of our pastors, if you call them brother so-and-so, they will look at you as if, have you backslidden? Don't you know I am man of God? You call me brother so-and-so, 
Leave the work you are doing. You are under discipline. Sir, what have I done? You don't give honor to whom honor is due. I am not brother. I am man of God. Think about that. Jesus didn't do that. Look at me the way I even called Jesus. and That's the way you call Jesus to you. We just say Jesus. And he is the all in all. And we just call him Jesus. And he is the, our high priest. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He is our Lord. He is our master. He is the captain of our salvation. He is the one that will judge the whole world. And we just call him Jesus. And we can't call your name. You'll be unhappy. You'll be sad. They didn't give me honor. They just called me brother so and so. But look at Jesus Christ. Look at Paul. Many times we call him Paul. Some of the preachers will say, Brother Paul. Look at Peter. We just say Peter. Some of our people will sometimes will say Apostle Paul. Sometimes we say Brother Paul. Sometimes we say just Paul. Sometimes we say Saul of Tarsus. We just call him the way we, the way we like. Are we crucified before because we call him Paul? Because we call him Brother Paul? Why do these people want to crucify us? Because we call them Brother so and so. And they say we are not calling them Evangelist so and so. And you address some people, they say, Don't address me like that next time. I am Reverend so and so. You think I'm your equal? I'm a minister and a servant of God. They have not learned of Christ. But when you learn of Christ, it says, learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. And it said, then ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He has talked about his humility and about his lowliness and meekness. Let's see an example of this. In John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Verse 4. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Here is the Lord. And over here, the Lord himself, he showed what it meant to be meek, to be lowly, to be humble. He took water. He could have sent Peter, go and get me a bowl of water there. He took it himself. And when he brought it, he stooped down. He washed the feet of the disciples. Can we ever do that? Even in deeper life where we teach sanctification, where we teach holiness, can the chiefest among you become the servants of all? Can the leaders among you be as he that serveth? Let's follow Christ. You see, if we follow these American evangelists and American preachers, we will do a lot of things that will not be following the footsteps of Christ. Let's get our Bibles out and read that Bible and study that Bible and follow after Christ. And it says in verse 17. Let's go back to verse 13. Ye call me Lord and Master and Lord. And ye say well, for so I am. If I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet. Ye ought to wash one another's feet. That is, if you are leaders, you should be able to do that and be humble. Sometimes when the announcement is made, let all the workers from Emo State go to the kitchen now and carry the food. The local pastors in Emo State will be sitting down. Are you not a worker? The house fellowship coordinator will be sitting up. But they said, let all the workers from Emo State go and carry the food. Is the coordinator not a worker? And the zonal leaders will be sitting down, expecting the people to go and bring the food and come and submit. Zonal leader, are you not a worker? 
And sometimes the women representatives, they will be sitting out. Let all the workers from Emo State, the brothers, go and take the food now. And all the sisters stand up, if you're a worker from Emo State, so you can serve. And you find some of these people, they are sitting down. They do not know what it means to follow Christ. Don't you remember when the food was multiplied? It was the apostles, the twelve of them, that went around and served the food. If we see all the zonal leaders and all the coordinators rise up now, the food is here. And we tell uh, the state overseer to pray. Now coordinators and zonal leaders serve the people in that, um, in that hall. Zonal leaders and coordinators of this particular state serve the people in this hall. Ah, they will say, why are they uh, doing like this? They make our office cheap. And they are downgrading us. They are belittling us. But I thought you were reading the Bible. When the 12 apostles were told to serve all the 5,000, were they downgrading them? Were they belittling them? If I, your Lord and Master, have done this, ye ought to do so one for another. Verse 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. When you get to heaven, Jesus will ask you if you read this verse. And all through your Christian life, did you ever do this? The example I left for you, that you should follow in my step. Did you ever do it? Did you ever serve the younger people? Did you ever serve the other people in the church? Or you like to go and establish something different so that there you can sit on your throne and then everybody can be saying, yes, sir. Everybody can be saying, that's the servant of God. That's the man of God. That's the minister of God. Let's follow after the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things. Happy are ye if ye do them. This is the very reason why we are born again. This is the very reason why we are called to follow Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The purpose of the Lord for you and for me is that we are totally conformed to the image of his Son. Totally conformed to the image of the Son of God. What do we know about the Son of God? The Bible tells us that he was holy. Therefore, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Highest. That's Luke chapter 1 verse 35. And if we know that Jesus Christ was holy, that means that if we are to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ourselves also will be holy. Then he was righteous. Because he was righteous, God thy God has exalted you above thy fellows. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. And if we know that Jesus Christ was righteous, upright, walking righteously before the Lord every time, then if we are to follow after the example and be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we know that we should be holy, we should be righteous. He was good. Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? He was faithful. Faithful is seed that has called you, who also will do it. He was true. Because we know grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. He was just. Do you know that even Judas Iscariot said, I have betrayed and I have uh, put in your hand the blood of that innocent one. Just one. He was guileless. There was no guile in him. He was sinless. He asked them in John 8, 46, Which of you convinced me of sin? He was spotless. He was harmless. He was obedient to the Father. 
He said, I always do the things that are pleasing to my Father. And we're to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means you must be holy. There are Christian groups. They call themselves Christian ministries. Oh, they say they don't, their emphasis is not holiness. They, they are even proud about it. They said God has given them a message of faith, but God has given to deeper life a message of holiness. But that they are not holiness people, they are faith people. They want to concentrate and emphasize faith, but we are to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. All these people that say they are preaching faith, do they have a higher kind of faith than Jesus Christ? The faith of Jesus made him to live a righteous life, an upright life, a holy life. And if you say you are following after the Lord Jesus Christ and you are called a child of God, a Christian, you must be holy. Are you faithful in all things? If you are following Jesus, you will be faithful. Jesus was faithful. He was faithful to the one that appointed him. Are you faithful? Many times I meet with the state overseers. And I instruct them. And I tell them, this is how to continue in the work. This is how to build according to pattern. Are they faithful? They must be asking themselves and asking the Lord if they are faithful. Many times we talk to our pastors. We say, this is how to handle the work in the church. Are they faithful? You see over here in Lagos, we keep to the word of God. And even though you see us that we're expanding all these buildings, we're having all these services, we still keep to the word of God. We're not uh, in Lagos here giving them just bread and butter. You are here on Sunday. You heard the word of God, the old past that we gave to the church. And that's what we gave to the church in the town. A Sunday before that, they heard the word of God on watch and pray. And you saw yesterday the word of God that they received. The necessity of being born again, being holy, being baptized in the Holy Ghost. The necessity of putting healing down and putting uh, holiness up. But sometimes when we tell our pastors, they go to their localities and they do a different thing. Ah, they say, if we preach holiness like that, people will not come to the church. Are you looking for unbelievers? Are you looking for crowd? There are people that for the past two, three years, they have not talked against worldliness. They say, if I talk like that, the people that are bringing money to the church, they will not bring money. Are you, do you have love of money in you? Are you looking for money? In Lagos here, if people give us uh, something, and we see they are not living right, we reject it. If somebody comes and he says, I have land somewhere, and I want you to come and build a church there, and we look at him, we say, are you born again? And he says, uh, well, I am trying my best. We say, well, hold your land. We want to introduce you to salvation and Jesus Christ first. Are you doing like that in your own state? We don't allow people here in Lagos to, you know, bring their money and say, well, I just had this business and I gained 50,000 naira. That's a look at whatever you gained. And I want to bring this tithe, 5,000 to the Lord. And I just wanted you to know that, well, I am one of the pillars in the church. No, you are not a pillar in our church. Money doesn't make a person a pillar in the church. What's money? When they brought the money like that, when uh, Simon said unto Peter, and he said, give me this gift also. So And let me give you this money So that if I lay my hands on anyone It will receive the Holy Ghost Peter said your money perish with you We are not looking for money And you know there are preachers There are pastors in deeper life They are looking for money They are looking for people that will help them build their church They will even make announcements And they will say You old people you are just there Or you just say well You just hear the word of God even ordinary evangelism you will not do. But look at this fellow now. He just came to our church not long ago. He is the one you may not know who has bought this organ for us. He is the one that put 10,000 naira down. And uh, you know this is what he's doing now. And the man is still committing adultery secretly. And the church is publicizing him. He gave 10,000 naira. Jesus will not do that. Jesus was faithful to the father. 
and at the headquarters here, we never do that. I see that in many places, they collect offering for many, many minutes. Just a small congregation. And uh, they will make announcements, they will read promises of the Bible, they will tell them, stand up, now we're still waiting for you, you have not given your offering. 30 minutes, they're still collecting offering. In our large church in Lagos here, within 5 to 8 minutes, we're finished. And I never do it myself. I preserve my energy, not for money. I don't use my energy to collect money. I use my energy to preach holiness. And the other people that are there, whether it's a woman, doesn't matter to us here. We don't say, well, if you put a woman there to tell them, raise up your offering now and put it in the bag, the people will not, they will not do it in an excited manner. Well, let's put a man there who can challenge them and drive them and compel them. You don't compel anybody. If you want to give the money for the work of God, it's between you and God. If you don't want to, I'm not going to come there as a pastor and give all my strength for 30 minutes and talking to you about, you know, give money, we're going to build this, we're going to build that. I allow the other people to do that. The other one, the most important one, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's why I put my energy. That's why I put my strength. That's why I put all the wisdom that God has given me. That's being faithful. That's being faithful. But some of the preachers are turning the thing around. Now they are interested in money. Now they are following after the people that have a lot of money. You know, in our church in Lagos here, we have professors teaching at the university. They come to our church. We have uh, engineers and medical doctors. We even have some doctors that have their own hospital. We have engineers that have, you know, a lot of things they're doing. But we don't run after them. If they want to see me for counseling, they get card from their zonal leader. Just like I see other people, I see them. And I, you know, tell them, Professor, let's all be Christians here. Go to your zonal leader. And I say, Professor, get the card. That's our keeping ourselves to be in an orderly manner. And I don't, I go to people's houses when the need is there. But I go to the houses of the poor. I hardly will go to the house. I don't think I know the house of any of the IFL people. I want them to understand that the word of God is not just for the poor people, it's for everybody. Why are we not faithful? But Jesus was faithful. He did as the Father wanted him to do. And if you're a real child of God, a minister of the gospel in our church here, you will be faithful. When did you see Jesus Christ going to Nicodemus' house and saying, Nicodemus, can I be in your house today? No. He will go to the house of Mary and Martha, those poor people. And he will allow Mary Magdalene, the one that had had seven evil spirits cast out of her, to serve him. He will go to, if they invite him, of course he will go so as to preach the gospel to them. But he wasn't looking for their houses saying, well, Nicodemus, I didn't even know your house. Since this time you have been asking me about, you know, all these questions. When will I come to your house and you must do me good? You know, I'm the son of God. When I come, let me know how, you, how rich you are. Are you a pastor? Or are you a thief? Are you a beggar? Are you looking for something else? Jesus was faithful. And Jesus was true. And if we are following after the steps of Jesus Christ, we will be true. There will be no false doctrine. Listen to all the cases that we have from Lagos. You won't pick out a false doctrine there. We keep to the word of God. True and faithful. There will be no sin. No sin. You see, it's uh, very, very bad. You won't find any of the apostles in the Bible. Check up. Any of the apostles in the Bible caught once with a lady, another person's wife. Not once. Not once. Once somebody is called an apostle, not even an elder. You know, in the New Testament, the people that were caught, they were the ordinary people. Those who are caught in immorality or this, you won't find one apostle in the whole of the New Testament caught in immorality. Caught befriending a lady in the church. Caught befriending anybody. 
who is married to another person or not married to any other person, you won't catch an apostle doing that. How do we catch a pastor? Too near to a lady. Another person's wife. How do we catch a pastor exchanging love letter with another person's wife? Jesus was sinless. And he has told everyone, go and sin no more. If we say we are children of God, if we say we are workers in the church, there is something that must never be named among you. Immorality? Never. Never. If you are a pastor, even though you have not got married, you will keep yourself. Well, they say, I don't know what is happening because maybe I have the lock for girls. Because I've discovered that everywhere I go, girls are always running after me. Maybe I have lock for girls. You have lock for judgment. You have lock for wrath. You have lock for punishment. You have lock for hellfire. A person that has lock for women has lock for the judgment of God. Why don't you go and pray that the blood of Jesus will wash that bad luck? Don't you know that is bad luck? That Jezebel is following after you? That Delilah is following after you? They want to remove your vision. They want to remove your eyes. They want to remove your power. You say you have luck for girls. You are lost. But you see in the Bible, the people followed after Jesus Christ. They didn't follow after sin. And Jesus was sinless and spotless. You couldn't accuse him. You couldn't accuse him that Jesus borrowed money from me and he didn't return the money. When they were taking Jesus to the cross, uh, for the person to say, ah, Jesus, they are taking you to the cross and you are going to a uh, diner. How about the money you borrowed from me and you have not returned? Now that you are going, how will I get it back? Did you find that in your Bible? How is it that Christians, they borrow money, they never pay back. They borrow from everywhere. Pastors borrow from their members. Workers borrow from unbelievers. Members of the church borrow from idol worshippers outside. Your God cannot take care of you. Your God cannot provide for you. You have to depend upon all those idol worshippers. Let us follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. In the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Like Christ. Be like Christ. In love. You see, when we started the house fellowship in your state, in your church, in your locality, the house fellowship was higher than the church membership and the church attendance. But eventually, the house fellowship leaders were put in those houses they were not walking in love. They will condemn the people in the house fellowship. They will gossip about them. If you went to those house fellowship leaders for counseling, all that you told them during the time of the counseling, you will hear it in the market. And when people saw that, eh, I saw that they put these people there to direct us and to lead us. Look at what I told this, uh, my sister, the house fellowship leader just secretly to counsel me look at where i'm hearing it in the market i will not go to that house fellowship anymore i will just be going to church now people have run away from the house fellowship because the people they are not walking in love and sometimes it is in our church our ushers are supposed to be walking in love when people come to the church the way they approach the person, the way they welcome the person, should make them to say, see how these people love those they have never known, those they have never seen. But the way the ushers deal with some of the people, because they are not walking in love, they say, once I finish this service, I will never come again. I didn't know that this is how this, their deeper life is. I was hearing good, good stories outside. I was hearing stories about miracle, about healing, about deliverance, but I didn't know that this is how they are. And they just live like that. But if you are a child of God, walk in love as Christ has loved us. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If we are called children of God, let's follow after Christ. Verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife 
or vain glory. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Sometimes in a retreat like this, people want to take water over there and you see them struggling, striving, scrambling, pushing one another. It is my turn. It is my turn. If you go there before me and take that water, I will pour it away. Are you a Christian? Let nothing be done through strife. We come here to serve food and you see the people Moses pastored for 40 days. It's not 40 days yet since we came. Jesus pastored for 40 days. It's not 40 days yet since we came. Paul, the soul of Tarsus, when he got an encounter with the Lord, he had not attended a single Bible study, a single revival hour, a single church service. He went to a place, he was praying on his knees for three days. If a new convert can do that for three days, why are we rushing so much for food? Why are we like those children of Israel that will say, you brought us out of Egypt and here we are in the wilderness now. This little manna, this light manna you have given us, we are not satisfied at all. And uh, to make the matter worse, there is no water to drink. And you said you are bringing us, you are going to lead us to a land plain with milk and honey. Since we have come to this place, we have been suffering are you like the children of Israel? Don't you know, all those people in the, uh, among the children of Israel that talk like that, they died in the wilderness. 600,000 adults, only two, Josh, uh, Joshua and Caleb, got to the land of Canaan. You know why? Because of drinking water, eating food, just, just those two things. And he said, we are not, uh, we are fed up, we are not happy, we didn't know this is how it will be. When you call us next time, we are not going to come. Let nothing be done through strife. Are you Jehovah's Witnesses? Carrying Bible and fighting? Carrying Bible and concentrating on drinking and eating? Carrying Bible and still going for entertainment and, and gluttony and greed? Are we not Christians? Can Christians not endure? Can Christians not be patient? Do nothing through strife or vain glory. And if you can do that here within these few days, it's likely you are doing that in your stage. And somebody will rise up at a time of a question and answer. Do you inside the scripture? I want to ask a question. I've been here in this church now for two or three years. Nobody even looked at my face to give me responsibility in this church. I didn't come here to sell Grand North. I came here to serve the Lord. And if you people are doing like that, I will leave and go to another church. Brother, we said, if you have any question on what we learned. Now, no, I don't want to listen to that. That's how you have been doing. And you put us in your pocket. Nobody can put me in the pocket. If you don't listen to me, I am going to another church. Uh -uh. Are we fighting? Did we steal your wife? Did we steal your money? When you were coming to church, did we have an agreement with you that when you come to the church, after six months, we will make you a lay reader, we will make you a catechist, we will make you a church warden, we will make you a, a master of ceremony for funeral ceremony, for burial. Did we promise you anything? Wasn't it when the devil was chasing you, you ran into deeper life looking for refuge? Now you have got refuge. Now you have got salvation. Now you have got forgiveness. Now you have got peace. Now we have prayed for you and your mind has cooled down. You are fighting with us. What have we done? How did we injure you? You are not doing anything for all that we are giving you. All that we are trying to do for you is that you will get to heaven. Look at the way we are treating the preachers. Why are you fighting? If you don't give me this, this is what I am going to do. And I will spoil the name of this church everywhere I go. Is that what you are going to do to us? We invited you. We helped you. You got saved. And, uh, you know, we baptized you in water. We did a lot of things for you. We counseled you. Look at all that we have done for you. We have invited some of you to walk us retreat. And after the whole thing, you said, well, if they don't do this for me, I will leave. I will go and spoil the name of the church. Are you going to spoil the name of the church? Are you going to say that we committed adultery with your wife? We stole your money? What have we done to you? 
all the time we are just preaching to you, preaching to you, preaching to you, so that you will get to heaven. We are feeding you. You are biting us. Is that good? Don't do anything by strife. Let's love one another. Let's forbear with one another. What are we fighting about? And they didn't make me house fellowship leader. Are we going to fight about that? Why don't we go and pray and say, God, I want to lead us fellowship. Except a man be given something from above, he cannot have it. And if God gives you something, nobody can take it away from you. If you have not got it, it is because God has not given it. Go and pray. Go and tell God. Don't let us fight because of that. They chose all those people to be women representatives. They neglected my wife. Are they telling me that my wife is not spiritual enough? All right. I will not go with them anymore. My wife, don't worry. We are going to start our own. Perish. Here, yes, Sean, why are we fighting? Nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Sometimes you ask somebody, why are you not coming to the church again? Well, I cannot come. Why? Well, they are playing politics in that church. What do you mean by playing politics in that church? Look at that fellow they put there to be leading you people. I am a senior to that fellow. As long as they put that fellow there, I will never be step into that church. I love that church. I want to be there. But as long as they put my own junior to be leading that house fellowship, not me. I will not step there. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Why are you saying you are better than the other people? Why don't you say in lowliness of mind, they put him there is better than myself. Why are you talking like this? Why don't we follow Christ and walk in the footsteps of Christ? Look not every man on his own things. Every man, you know, fighting for his own right. Fighting for his own right. I'm a Christian, but I know my right. I'm a Christian, but I know, you know, since uh, they just called me coordinator. Since three months now, they didn't give me any chance to preach. They give you even zona leader, they tell zona leader to preach. They tell those other people to preach. I'm coordinator, I'm state evangelist. Do you know? I've been counting for three months now. So I'm so I'm preached two times. So I'm so I've preached once. They have not called me three months to preach. And I'm better than all those. How do you know you are better than those people? Don't let us do like this. If we continue like this, we'll ruin our Christian lives and ruin the little church which we have in the stage. Look not every man on his own things. But every man also on the things of other people. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Lord is calling us to repentance this morning. He's calling us that we follow Christ. You see, when we started this deeper life, if they slapped us on the one cheek, we say sorry. And we turn the other to them. They called us names. We never abused them back. We didn't know how to fight. If we stood up in the bus to preach, some of the bus conductors will push us down. We will say, God have mercy on you. We will say, praise the Lord. We will say, I am suffering with Christ. Sometimes they, they take some of our own our young people. Their parents will take them and lock them up in the house and beat them. They will not give them food for three days. And after suffering them like that, they come out, they say, are you still going to go to deeper life? They will say, by the grace of God, that's my church. Why, are, why can't we do like that today? You see, in Lagos here, uh, in the 70s, they took a secondary two girl, secondary two, very, very young. They said, we don't know what deeper life has given to this fellow that every time reading Bible, every time going to church, every time going to Bible study, and they took her away. They took her to a village in another state to do juju. And they gave her to the woman doing the juju. They said, woman, give her everything and wash the deeper Christian life ministry and Jesus and Bible away from her head. And the, the woman said, don't worry. Come back in two weeks. She will never remember anything they called Jesus or Bible. And she washed her. They, they tied her down there. There was nothing she could do. We were looking for her. We couldn't find her because they took her to interior in a village. And they took her under a tree. They took her in a house. They took her everywhere. After two weeks, the woman said to the parents, they said, take her away. She will not know road to deeper life again. 
I'm telling you that happened in the 70s. The moment the feet of that secondary two girls stepped Lagos, the first place she came was flat two, where we were having a Bible study there. And uh, the mother said, I don't know what to do again. That uh, all these, what did they, they, their medicine must be stronger than the other one, the medicine, the word of God. And uh, after that, they said they are not going to pay the school fees. The girl said, well, I'm not looking for certificate. I've got another certificate, be a born again. And uh, eventually, but that girl passed secondary school. That girl is now a lady. Now uh, went through uh, NC. Now she's teaching. Now the parents are asking. They are saying, well, help us. Forget everything we did to you. We know we cannot take deeper life away from you. Now you can do what you like. Now, well, but today, there are many people, you are not secondary two girl. You cannot suffer persecution. You cannot follow after Christ. Oh, in Lagos here, we thank the Lord for what God is doing. You see over here in Lagos, there was a woman that came to deeper life. Just this one now, just about two, three years ago. And the man, that's the husband, was angry. Very, very angry. Started beating that woman. Tore all her clothes to make her naked. And wanted to throw the heart down from upstairs to the ground. The woman quickly took the curtain the uh, cutting on the door and wrapped herself and ran away and came to Bagada. As the woman came, the man ran after her. And while the woman was with me uh, and explaining, look at what, uh, you know, uh, I'm suffering because I gave my life to the Lord. I will not go on in sin. The man came in. Thank God because of the glory of God when he came down. When he came in, he sat down. And as I looked at him, he was humble. And I said, what's the matter? He couldn't talk well. He was stammering. And the woman told me everything that happened. I said, woman, go back home. God is in control. The woman didn't say, eh, I cannot go. I cannot go. Find another house for me. If the church is going to do like that, I will never come to this church anymore. She took my word as a final word. She went back home. Later, a few weeks later, I saw the man, were giving te they were giving testimony on Thursday at the Miracle Revival Hour. And I saw the man, he came out, he won I, I said, ah, look at this man, just a few weeks ago I saw him. The man that wanted to throw his wife down. And then he told the people, he said, I was wicked before, I was a great sinner before, but now I am born again. And now that man is coming to church and the wife is coming to church. But you see, in our church, we endure persecution. We endure the jesting of the people. It is by humility that we are going to overcome the world. It is not by fighting and pulling one another apart and pulling the church apart and saying, if you don't give me this, I will never allow this church to have rest. I will be a thorn in their flesh. Why do, we, why do you want to be a thorn in the flesh of Jesus? A thorn in the flesh of the body of Christ. Don't you know, whatever you do to us, you are doing to Christ. Jesus said to Saul, 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 why persecutest thou me? If you say you, are, you want to be a thorn in the side of a pastor, you want to be a thorn on the side of the children of God, don't you know that means you are a thorn in the side of Jesus? Do you want to do that to Jesus? The crown of thorns they put on the head of Jesus, that's not enough. You want to add to the thorn on the side of Jesus? Don't do that. Jesus has suffered enough. Jesus has borne enough pain and agony. Why do you want to add to the pain and the agony of Jesus Christ? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let us follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Let us say, Lord, in the past, I made great mistake. I followed after my own way. But from today, I will follow after the footsteps of Jesus. I will not make trouble with anybody anymore. I will not fight anybody. I don't want to be a thorn in the side of our pastors, of our preachers, of this church. See, look at this church. If we destroy this church, is there any other church that will evangelize Nigeria? Look at all the other churches. Everything has crumbled down. Why don't we help this church? 
Why don't we be an encouragement to this church? Even if our state overseers, they make a little mistake, why do we magnify that? And we want to destroy the church because of a little mistake? Why? Our coordinators and zonal leaders, they make a little mistake. Why do we magnify that? And we want to destroy the church. If we destroy this church, is there another church that is the hope of Nigeria? Look, before deeper life came, all the churches have been trying, but they never could establish holiness in the country. All the churches have been trying. They never could establish the doctrines of the Bible in the country. Look at it now. Many churches are trying to copy deeper life. Now they are trying to teach restitution. Now they are trying to teach holiness. And they are looking up to us. If we destroy this church and scatter this church, do we have another one that the other churches will look up to? Even the government now, they know about deeper life. They fear deeper life. And they look up to deeper life. They know that if we can get some of those honest, deeper life people into some position, maybe things will change. All the corruption will change. If we tear this church apart, because somebody offended me, because the other one did not respect me, if we tear this church apart, what is the hope for this country? Brothers and sisters, let's build together. Let's work together. I love you. And I believe you love me. We should love one another. We should love God. We should love the Bible. Follow after the example of Jesus Christ. If somebody slaps you on the one cheek, even in the church here, turn the other to him. If somebody has cheated you, you say, they should have given me that position and responsibility. They didn't give me. Don't let us quarrel because of that. Say, well, when the time of the Lord comes, it will come to me. That's how to build the church. But... If we continue like we have been doing, I don't know the hope for Nigeria, the hope for Africa. I want you to support the church, support the word of God, support the doctrines of the Bible. Let's be together. Let's follow in the footsteps of Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we shall never fight. We shall never quarrel. We shall never oppress one another. We will not be a troublemaker in the church of the living God. Are we going to follow Christ? Are we going to follow in the footsteps of Christ? Let's rise up and tell the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm sorry for my past mistake. I'm sorry for my past sin. I'm sorry for all the bad, bad comments I've said about our state overseers, about the district pastors, about the zonal leaders, about the coordinators, about the wives of these uh, pastors and state overseers, about everyone. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. Now I want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. I want to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. In your family, follow his footsteps. In your place of work, follow the footsteps of Jesus. In the market, do as Christ will do. Don't have any bad comment against your pastor don't you say i hate the pastor you can't hate your father in the lord you can't hate your pastor what have they done that you are hating them love them esteem others better than you are Follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. If you are not born again yet, give your life to Jesus. If you have been born again, how about becoming sanctified? If you have been sanctified, are you baptized in the Holy Ghost yet? Let's follow the footsteps of Jesus. Let us be conformed to the image of Jesus.
Almighty God, we thank you very much because of your words which has come unto us. We thank you because of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you have sent unto us. He lived in this world and he has shown us an example that we might follow in his steps. Father, we thank you because you have allowed us to live and to be able to hear a message like this in times like this. Oh Lord, we thank you because by your grace we are not dull of hearing. We have seen the steps, we have seen the life, we have seen the things that are needful. We have seen how we ought to conform to the image of Christ. And Lord, we are praying for grace to be able to follow him and follow him all the days of our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we are asking that the humility of Christ, the meekness of Christ, and his faithfulness, and his love, and his submission, and all these things will be found in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we are praying that while we live and we serve you, while we uphold your name, we shall not be hypocrites. We shall be believers indeed. And we shall confirm everywhere we are to the image of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, all forms of shallowness, all forms of hypocrisy, and everything that does not agree with the life of Christ, we reject them, we throw them off in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, from now on, we take on ourselves the yoke of the Lord. We we'll follow after him, we we'll walk with him, and we we'll seek to please you. We we'll seek to do your will, and we shall do it all the days of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, where we have heard, we repent in sincerity. And Lord, from today onwards, we are going to keep our eyes on the word of God. We are going to keep our hearts on the word of God. And we are going to walk by the steps of Christ everywhere we go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we are praying that none here will live as if he is a Gentile. But Lord, we are praying that when the Gentiles are here, as they hear the word of God, they will seek to draw closer unto God. They will seek to yield unto you. They will seek to be born again. And they will pray unto you for a change of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, we all together, in love, in meekness, in humility, in faithfulness, we are going to build this church. We are going to follow after you. And we are going to live in your will. And nothing will hinder from falling after you all our days in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, the grace to follow, give to all of us. And the knowledge that we need, give to all of us. And Lord, give us the grace to desire your word more than anything else. Thank you, Father, because we know. As we keep by your word, it shall be well with us. And all we need of you we shall receive of you in Jesus' name.